let's talk briefly about sex workers. In this land where men still dominate, get hired and paid way more than females and those who identify as female and to date are not capable of getting pregnant, women and those who are non-binary and transgender are the victim of most rapes, most intimate partner violence, most discriminatory employment practices, and are, without question, the beneficiaries of the greatest casualties in a cis male dominated society. Often the butt of jokes, often misunderstood, and often, believe it or not, romanticized because who could not be charmed by the allure of a cis male? The sex worker is vulnerable on so many levels. They do dangerous work in order, in the majority of cases, for barely sustainable wage and risk of multiple diseases, some life-threatening like HIV, a myriad of STDs, physical harm, and, for those capable, pregnancy. As a trained public health professional, I find myself reading things like the Annals of Epidemiology and found a fascinating global study about abortion amongst female sex workers. The researchers did not choose to look at all people capable of getting pregnant, just cis female sex workers, published in the Annals in September 2023. It was compelling to me that despite over a couple thousand scientific studies, only 60 even dealt with the topic of abortion, or about 3%. Remember, sex work exists in every country in the world. Wherever there are humans, there are sex workers. This has been true for as long as humans have existed. In countries where elective abortion is illegal, the prevalence of at least one induced abortion was more than 35%. Multiple induced abortion prevalence was more than 23% in sex workers. In countries where elective abortion is legal, one induced abortion prevalence was more than 44% and multiple induced abortion prevalence was almost 20%. What does this tell us? The researchers in the study concluded that, quote, induced abortion is prevalent among female sex workers and highlights the need for interventions to increase access to effective contraception and safe abortion care. While induced abortion prevalence does not significantly differ across the legal grounds for abortion, Self-managed abortion prevalence is higher in countries where elective abortion was illegal, focusing the urgent need for accessible abortion services for female sex workers in criminalized settings and to increase access to the full spectrum of sexual and reproductive health services. To me, it reminds us of the onus of making your own decisions about your life and health still falls directly on the person capable of getting pregnant for their own survival. It is cruel for people not capable of getting pregnant to make policy for people who are capable, like male legislators or religious institutions or cis female influencers, not in the shoes of those who are. We need to consider everyone's need to make their own health decisions. We need to keep fighting. The wrong people are making decisions. Make a plan to vote to correct this. I'm Barbara Levin, Chair of the Board of Toby's Fund for Reproductive Health Equity. Toby's Fund is a nonprofit serving McHenry County, Illinois. We provide funding to other nonprofits for abortions, 
emergency contraception, and pregnancy prevention for McHenry County residents who can't afford the services. We are beyond the binary. Body autonomy is the right of everyone, regardless of financial status. Thank you.